Um, hello, everybody. Sorry for running a bit late. Um, before we begin our tap room, um, like as usual, could you please just confirm that you can see the picture and you can hear me? So just drop me a message into the chat box or into the question box somewhere so I'll be able to see if everything is configured properly and we can actually start our tap room. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, yeah, hello everybody. Hope you're doing great. And our today's tap room is dedicated to the iSCSI configuration in uh, VMware ESXi. So, as always, my name is Vlad. I'm still the pre-sales tech engineer in Starwind. Uh, still helping uh, customers with uh, the proper approach uh, to um, Starwind deployment for their particular infrastructures, advising um, on choosing the proper hardware, the proper software, and basically like combining all of these components and trying to advise the best, the cost efficient, the um, performance slash capacity efficient configurations. So that's my job here in Starwind. And Without any further ado, let's continue to our today's topic, which is like sounds pretty simple actually. Mm, to be quite honest, it's a bit more simpler than uh, in Hyper-V when uh, you need to manually um, perform uh, connections uh, to each SCSI target. Weaver, it seems a bit easier as uh, Weaver has this automatic discovery feature. Um, but still, there are some questions, and I will, I will gladly show you how to do this right with Starwind. So, let's go ahead and move to our test environment. We have this VMware configuration with just two hosts, hyperconverged. So, speaking about the hardware, they're just like the test stands, just the test hardware, nothing really special, based on some um, home-baked Core i7s with some like 32, probably a bit more RAM, so nothing really special really. Um, there are some virtual machines, as well as Starwind virtual machine, Starwind 1, which is installed on the first host, Starwind 2 installed on the second one. And um, like the really crucial thing in uh, connecting iSCSI sessions in Weaver is not even like the proper networking configuration because um, it, it can be done just by reviewing our guidance basically on this topic. So as you can see, we have like anything really special here, just like virtual switch for each purpose. So we have three iSCSI virtual switches, virtual switch one uh, to virtual switch three. Also, we have some virtual switches for synchronization that does not have uh, that do not have VM kernel port because they really just do not require it. So, speaking about this part of configuration, like really simple, three networks for iSCSI, uh, v switch one, two, and three. Um, they also have IP addresses in different subnets, which are the general recommendations for uh, all Starwind related networking. So as well as for synchronization, you should always keep uh, iSCSI networks in the separate subnets. So we have 10 subnet, 12 subnet, uh, sorry, 20 subnet and subnet 30 for iSCSI traffic here. IP2 uh, for the second host and let me just go back, yeah, and first IP address for the first host. So totally identical configuration on each side. Um, like really any other tweaking here is not necessary. Um, the only thing that you probably um, should do is just like turn on Jumbo frames, nothing more. And after that, we can just go directly to the Starwind virtual machine, create our device and connect it uh, to the WinVerse through iSCSI initiator. So let's go ahead and do this. We have this RDP session already open. Moreover, I have already created the Taproom device, but eventually I've just like pressed the rescan button and it got all the sessions connected. So I probably will create one more device just to show you how it looks like in real life. So we're creating the new device here. Just some regular like device, one gigabyte size, nothing more. Let's call it something like um, Taproom 
too. Yeah, not very original, but still. Uh, the size will be one gigabyte, as this is just the test device. Oh, <laughs> and there's not enough disk space. Yeah, okay, let's do something with it. Okay, D2, demo CSV, demo DS. I'll just like try to clear some space for our new device here. So, and this one. Okay, hope there wasn't any crucial data. Okay, now we should have enough space. Now let's continue and create our new device. Yeah, we're going without L1, L2 cache. So basically just to show you how basically the sessions should be connected. Here it is. Uh, the newly created device, one gigabyte size. 512 allocation unit size for VMware environments. I always recommend this allocation size for VMware and 4K for Windows, as 4K stays for Windows native sizing. And 512 is like a bit closer to VMware's. Um, so let's just replicate this device to the partner host so we'll be able to actually create the shared data store between those hosts. So we are choosing the synchronous replication obviously, create a new partner device, storing at the same pass as on the previous host, and here we can see all of our networks. So, uh, we have seven networks uh, overall, and six of them are used by Starwind. Uh, those top three are used as iSCSI networks, and starting from the subnet 40, they are synchronization networks, so uh, we are choosing them correspondingly. We are using um, those three for synchronization, those three for iSCSI traffic, so, and this one, let it be Herbit as well. And once again, speaking about the Herbit network, it's like totally common, um, more or like it's really like recommended approach, just like gives you this hardware efficiency, if I can tell, tell so. Um, so instead of just assigning a separate, a dedicated network, physical network for Herbit only, um, it will be much better just to assign Herbit on top of the iSCSI, iSCSI networks as well as on top of the management network, because Herbit really does not consume much traffic at all. It's like probably 100 megabyte per month, something like that. So really you can just safely assign it to your existing iSCSI networks and management network and go with it. So there is no need for any extra networks for Herbit. And we are pressing OK. Next, next, and create. Now it will quickly synchronize one gigabyte of data. So, yeah, as you can see, that was really quick. I'll spam refresh button just to speed up the process. Yep, okay. So we have now newly created Taproom 2 device, which I will show you how to present uh, to vSphere, actually. So in order to do this, we just uh, need to go to the storage section in configuration tab sorry, not storage, storage adapter section. Uh, we are choosing iSCSI software adapter here, going into properties. Uh, now keep attention that uh, the network configuration is totally empty here. Uh, we do not really want to uh, bind any networks to specific ports or to specific IP addresses here. It's not really recommended for any type of iSCSI storage. It works um, like not really for any type, but it, it works great with the physical storage. But in our case, um, as well as with the vSAN, for example, as well as uh, with other uh, virtual SAN software defined solutions. So we just do not really need to use this step at all. It just may cause um, like disruptiveness in your network, so which is not really good. 
and here as you can see we have the list of IP addresses already added um, which are those that I have already shown you for um, in Windows virtual machine such virtual machines so just like to draw a line here we have those two uh, those three SCSI networks one two and three and just to double check their IP addresses we have this 172.16.10.10 which stays for the first SCSI network, uh, 172.16.20.10, which stays for the second IP address, and 176.16.30.10, which is the third SCSI network. So the second host have, uh, has the corresponding IP addresses, uh, which are just like 20 at the end, basically. So they're exactly the same. Let's go back to the configuration wizard and as you can see here are the three IP addresses from the first Starwind virtual machine and here are three ISCAS IP addresses for the second Starwind virtual machine correspondingly. So basically that's it, you just press add, uh, type in the IP address of the ISCASI network you would like to add and press OK and it will be added and after that uh, the only thing that should be done is this risk on all thing because when you just add SCSI networks it will automatically uh, ask for rescan if you will not rescan um, like VMware will not be able to um, discover all paths from the all IP addresses provided it will do it obviously in like in some time but we really want to like speed up the process so we'll always spread this risk on all button so as you can see we have already some data stores uh, some starting devices discovered um, and this one actually yeah uh, this looks like the taproom one device or just the taproom device uh, this one so it's already discovered that's why I, I wanted to create another one just to show you so we're pressing the risk on and okay And in a couple of seconds, you will be able to see another one gigabyte device, which is our newly created Starwind device. So here it is, I believe. Yeah. Well, basically that's it. After that, you can just double check the storage section. Um, I will not just create another data store because really it's just the simple process of creating the new data store, nothing really new for you. So I will use our already created Starwind data stores, DS1 and 2, they are already shared so that each host can see these data stores. The only thing that should be checked after the iSCSI connection is properties and how the multipassing works actually. So we're using this manage pass button and see if everything seems okay here. And from what I can see is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So yeah, one unknown dead pass. Let's try to refresh and it's still here. Well, to be quite honest, I'm not really sure what is this. I think uh, this is another iSCSI pass from the third Starwind virtual machine, which, uh, yeah, this one, Starwind VVOLS, which I personally used for testing the VVOLS. And um, basically, after identifying that all other passes that should be connected are actually present there as active, because really the preferred policy for round-robin environments will always be round-robin. Uh, you can use fixed pass, you can use um, most recently used one for the specific type of deployments, for example, when you have kind of active-passive configuration, for example, you have uh, two data centers, you would like to, um, you would like your production to work primarily on the first site, so you can specify the fixed pass just to be sure that there is like really less latency than uh, using round robin approach because in this case the local machines will still need to write on the dedicated data center. In this case you might try the fixed pass approach um, and it will work for you. But generally when we have our reg regular configuration when two hosts are just located near each other the best way is to use round robin. And after that we can just close all of this and basically, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> that's how to uh, connect iSCSI, uh, con iSCSI sessions, iSCSI targets in VMware iSCSI Initiator.
So yeah, I hope this will be helpful. Um, and this is a good time to answer your, your questions. So yeah, go ahead and ask. I think We'll, we'll try to cover not really only the iSCSI configuration part, but you can ask just like all the questions you would like to, and I will try to answer them. So yeah, please be free to write down them in the questions box in uh, GoToMeeting. Still no questions. Yeah, unfortunately I do not have some kind of background music to turn on, but it's still a bit awkward moment. Yeah guys, I know they're only like six person uh, sitting and like listening to me but still please um, ask your questions well it looks to me like there aren't really any questions from you, which is a bit disappointing for me. <laughs> okay, guys. If so, I believe like we can just like go ahead and finish this step from because uh, really. Like sometimes um, there are just the tap rooms when you have uh, some very short topic, you just like cover this topic and another half an hour goes for the question part. But I think this one is not this kind of tap room. Okay, anyway, it was nice to meet you all. And if there are like really no questions from you, so I wish you a great day. Thank you all for attending this short tap room and have a great day. Yeah, bye bye.